Hello everybody, welcome to Mad Our MATLAB tutorials. This is Tanmay and in this tutorial I am going to show you how to model a three phase sinusoidal pulse width modulation scheme in MATLAB. So before going to the actual model, I will just give you some brief information about what SPWM is. SPWM is a type of carrier based PWM scheme. A scheme consists of a modulating and a carrier signal. The amplitude and frequency of the modulating signal is less than that of the carrier. The ratio of amplitudes of modulating and carrier signals is called as the modulation index and is given by MA is equal to VM by VC. So this is the simulation model that I have made. The first block that I am going to show you is of the modulating signal. Now in this block, the values that you need to give are the amplitude and the frequency. Now the value of amplitude that I have given here is Vm and that of frequency which is required in radian per second is 2 pi fm. Now the actual value of Vm I have mentioned somewhere else. I will tell you where I have written it. But for time being just assume that the value of Vm is available. And this 2 pi fm, the value of fm is in hertz. This was for the first phase. Now going to the second phase. Even this phase has the same values of amplitude and frequency. But this has a phase shift from the previous phase which is of 2 pi by 3 radians which is equal to 120 degrees. The third block also has the same values of amplitude and frequency but has a phase shift of 4 pi by 3 radians that is equal to 240 degrees shifted from the first wave, first modulating signal. The next block that I am going to show you is the carrier signal. This block has two sets of parameters. First one are the time values and the second are the output values. As you can see here, these values are enclosed in square brackets and uh, basically this block is is obtained from the library browser. I'll just I'll just show you where it is. You just have to go here. In this, you have to type this. This is the block that I've used. So this is the nature of carrier wave that we intend to bring in our simulation. It has five points. The first point has a time value of zero and the output value is also zero. The second point has a time value of one by four FC and the output value is plus VC. Now this one by FC is equal to T where t is the time period of this carrier wave. As you can see, this is the relation that we have applied. So when you write 1 by 4 fc, it is equal to t by 4, which corresponds to 1 fourth of the time period. The third point that we need here is 1 by 2 fc, and the corresponding output value is 0. This point, this time value 1 by 2 fc corresponds to half the time period, that is equal to t by 2. The fourth point is 3 by 4 fc and minus vc which corresponds to 3t by 4 and minus vc and the last point is the end of the cycle which is 1 by fc which is equal to t and the output value is 0. So as you can see here I have entered same values that I just now explained to you in the previous slide. Just take your cursor to some blank space and right click there. Then go down to model properties. In this click the callbacks tab. In this tab you need to click the INIT FCN option. As you can see here I have written all the values that I have mentioned in the simulation. VC is equal to 100. MA 
is the modulation index which is equal to 0 0.8 vm is the amplitude of the modulating signal which is equal to ma into vc fm is the frequency of the modulating signal which is equal to 50 hertz fc is the frequency of the carrier wave which is equal to 600 hertz and i'll just explain you what these are i have used this in the next block which is the rate transition block now let me tell you that this block is not mandatory may not be required in your simulation but in my simulation it was showing some distortions in the output waveform of the carrier wave as well as the modulating signal that's why I've, what I've done is I've just discretized this this wave and converted it into a discrete wave and it is giving me better results so if if it works in your case without this block it's absolutely fine but it was necessary in my case now what I've entered in this block is the sampling time I'll just show you see it is here this value is TS and this value I have obtained in this way FS is the sampling frequency which I have kept as 100 times that of the carrier frequency so more the number of samples more smooth your carrier wave will be so that's why I have put it 100 times and TS is the sample time which is the reciprocal of the sampling frequency that is equal to 1 by S after this I have given the output of the carrier block and the modulating signal to a comparator operator a relational operator this operator I have selected to be greater than or equal to now what this operator does is it compares the modulating signal and the carrier signal and whenever the modulating signal is greater than the carrier wave it gives an output of 1 whenever it is greater than or equal to and when it is less than the carrier wave it will give an output of 0 the rest of the two phases need to be modeled in the same way and finally I have attached a scope to all of them to see the waveforms of modulating signal the carrier wave and the output of the relational operator in the same window and in the end I have compared the outputs of the relational operators which are the actual PWM pulses that you need to generate I have, I have, I have given it to a single scope and you can view all of them in the same graph window so let us now simulate this model as you can see here I have kept the simulation time as 0.1 seconds and now I will run this model using this icon so the simulation has completed now so now we can open these scopes to see the waveforms you have to perform an auto scale operation so as you can see here this is the modulating wave of the first phase this is the carrier wave which is same to all the three phases and finally this is the output of the relational operator which is the PWM pulse of the first phase I'll just change the axis properties here yes so now you can compare that uh, whenever the modulating signal is greater than the carrier wave you will get a 1 I'll just zoom this inside yeah so if you see this portion this is somewhere at 50 and if you just extend it upwards this is 50 so at this point both these values are same but after this point the modulating signal is greater than the carrier wave and that's why the output is 1 and this repeats for the entire simulation you will get the same waveforms the same type of waveforms in all the three phases the only difference is that 
the modulating signal is different in all the three cases rest all things are same and that's why you will get a phase shifted PWM in all the three cases and this is the waveform for the third phase and finally I'm going to show you how these look together for you to compare so these are the waveforms of the three phases that we have simulated these are the PWM outputs and these as you can see if you compare all these three waveforms you will find that each of this wave is phase shifted by 120 degrees from the other wave any other wave that you select so that's it for this tutorial please subscribe to our channel mad over matlab and if you need us to perform any simulations that you like please leave a comment in any of those videos which we have uploaded and we will get back to you soon and if you need the model file of this simulation you can just leave your mail mail id in the comment section so we can send you the model file so goodbye and take care